Hello, my name is John Capobianco, and I'm a developer advocate for Cisco Learning and Certifications Training Boot Camps. Welcome to the Cisco Certifications 101 Series, Part 3, An Introduction to Exam Topics. What are exam topics? Well, if you're pursuing a Cisco certification for the first time, or maybe a new certification in your career path, the Cisco exam topics really are a blueprint about the topics that you're going to encounter during your exam. We're going to discuss where you can find these blueprints, give you an example of the CCNA, Cisco Certified Network Associate exam topics, and explain how you can use these to prepare a study plan. We can also look at where you can find other resources to help you on your journey and give you the best opportunity to pass your Cisco certification exam. The Cisco Learning Network, found at learningnetwork.cisco.com, is a one-stop shop for all things related to Cisco Learning. As you can see, there are certifications, communities, webinars and videos, study resources, and a Cisco store. Let's take a look at the CCNA. Now, you can download at a glance and view the infographic, but I think what's most important is the exam topics. So if we look at the exam topics, they will give you the exam description, the length of the exam, and a breakdown by percentage of high-level topics. As you can see, the CCNA is made up of network fundamentals, which is 20% of the exam, network access, which is 20% of the exam, IP connectivity, 25% of the exam, IP services, 10% of the exam, security fundamentals, 15% of the exam, and automation and programmability, 10% of the exam. Now, I've written quite a few certifications in my career, starting with the CCNA. I always refer to these exam topics and the exam blueprint to help guide my studies and sharpen my focus on specific topics that I'm going to be tested on. Now, what's important is the verbs that break down these topics. So when we expand the blueprint, we can see that network fundamentals is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 subtopics. Now what's important and what you should pay attention to are the verbs. For example, explain the role and function of network components. Describe characteristics of network topology architectures. Compare physical interface and cabling types. Identify interface and cable issues. Configure and verify IPv4 addressing and subnetting. Now, this will help you understand whether you should be able to actually configure something using CLI commands, command line interface commands, or possibly show commands to verify IPv4 addressing and subnetting, or if you need to be able to describe or explain specific technologies. So it's very important to pay attention to the verbs and whether or not the expectation is that you have the fundamental information that you need to explain or describe or if you need the hands-on experience to be able to configure or verify certain network state or configuration items. Personally, I like to use the blueprint and come up with a study plan for all of the major topics, but I really look closely at the verbs. As you can see for network access, 
there is a lot of configure and verify topics here, which means possibly going beyond just so-called book knowledge from, say, the official certification guide. You might need and will need some hands-on experience configuring and verifying. Now, what I love about the Cisco Learning Network is that we no longer have to take this journey on our own. As you can see, there are communities dedicated to all of these certifications. And if we look at the CCNA community, you can start a discussion, you can follow this, you can see how many posts, almost 13,000 posts, almost 500 articles, over 150,000 followers. And you can see that there are discussions sorted by top questions, latest posts, or the most recent activity. You can see how many votes and comments and views a particular topic has. There are links to articles, links to blogs, and links to events that can help you shore up your study plan and give yourself the best opportunity to pass the exam. There is so much to discover here in the Cisco Learning Network. You can also find study materials. This is over 10 hours of CCNA study materials, and you can see the breakdown and how these study materials line up with the blueprint. So if you're maybe learning about automation and programmability, if that's new to you, if you feel comfortable with network access and network fundamentals, but you need to shore up on your automation and programmability, there is a full planned activities guide that you can follow. It also includes your status and how much of these you've, you've completed, and it's on-demand free learning. This goes well beyond simply reading the official study guide, which I still recommend that you do. There are even more resources in the Learning Network if we visit the Network Store. And we can see for CCNA in the Network Store, they have preparation bundles, they have learning labs, they even have an exam review, which I recommend strongly that you take in the days or weeks leading up to your exam to give you a rough idea whether or not you're close to passing an exam review or if you still need to return to labs or book learning before you take and sit your actual exam. Now, if we look at the learning locator, this actually provides authorized training from around the world. So if you feel that you need to go above and beyond the free offerings from the learning network, we can click on CCNA and there is an official study group. There are 397 different offerings for implementing and administering Cisco solutions for the CCNA. You can also see that Cisco learning credits can be used to purchase or, or put towards any of these learnings. Another place you might want to visit is the Cisco Digital Learning at digital-learning.cisco.com which includes a free day, free three day trial, or you can be use Cisco learning credits for a subscription. As you can see, there is even a free demo of the CCNA implementing and administrating Cisco solutions. I want to mention that there is also the DevNet sandboxes under developer.cisco.com slash site slash sandbox where you can get started with the sandbox log in with say your github account or your cisco cco account and you can reserve on-demand labs 
for a variety of technologies, including technologies that will be part of your CCNA exam. In addition to the fantastic resources John has recommended, please also consider using our updated exam topic study tool. This will provide a list of all of the exam topics for the certification exam you're preparing for and help you keep track of the material you need to study. Find a link to the updated exam topic study tool in the description of this video. So to recap, you want to start your journey and you don't have to take this journey alone in the Cisco Learning Network. Sign up, start looking at discussions, start your own discussions. Now, what happens if you don't pass your exam? Well, I'm here to reassure you that Cisco certifications are a mindset. They're a journey. Yes, the destination is passing your CCNA or passing the certification that you're trying to achieve. But failure is often part of this journey. I myself have failed several Cisco exams throughout my career. And I've some exams I've actually failed more than once. This is not necessarily the end of your journey. And what you will get is a report that maps to that blueprint, which will show you the percentages on how you did on those specific topics during your attempt. This is a great way to use the feedback to go back to the Cisco Learning Network and possibly shore up on some of your weaker areas of the blueprint of the exam. So it, it is difficult to accept a failure, but it's all part of the journey. And I really wouldn't look at it as a failure as much as a learning opportunity. You sat for the exam, you made a good attempt at the exam, a lot of preparation and labs and book learning and studying went into that attempt. It is not lost just because you may not have achieved certification status on your first attempt. You can use the report from your exam to go back and find the areas that you were weakest on and do more labs, do more discovery, start some discussions in the Cisco Learning Network. So thank you for joining me. I wish you all the best on your certification exam journey. Make sure that you make the blueprint and the official certification topics and subtopics part of your preparation. Build your learning plan around that blueprint and use the verbs specifically to know whether you need to explain or describe a technology or if the expectation is that you need to configure and verify commands or code to satisfy the requirement for the exam. There are many resources available that we've covered here today and even more. There is a thriving community in social media and within Cisco and externally to Cisco. So start planning your next certification today Join the Cisco Learning Network, and I wish you all the best.